Hi, Lisa. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Merry Christmas. A Merry Christmas to you, too. I will be your host for this afternoon, so I just wanted to say a quick hello before we begin. Hi. At least I, I see you because somebody's filming me, so um, please understand if I don't respond to your hand gestures or something oh, like that. No I wanted to say good afternoon to all our listeners and viewers on today's tab. Today, and we have with us Chef Lisa Davis from Grenada and Chef Belinda Bishop. So, ladies, welcome. Hello. So, so first, Thank you. Thank you, you are very welcome. So, first, I'm going to start with Chef Belinda Bishop. Chef, can you tell us a little bit about, about yourself? Um, I know Grenada is home for you, so you give us a little bit of history about yourself and then a little bit about your dish. We know you're going to be making a spice banana foster crepes, and we're really looking for that. I promise you, this episode is going to be very indulgent. It's all about the sweetness and the spice of Grenada, and we'll, this will be featured by both That's our right. chefs. So, Chef Belinda, welcome That's and thank right. you for joining the travel advisors who saw the Caribbean. Well, thank you very much um, for having, having me. I'm so excited to be able to showcase Grenada and the culinary delights that we have here. Um, a little bit about myself is that um, but I am from Grenadian parentage and I've been living back here in Grenada for over 10 years. And um, I get the opportunity to showcase my craft here in Grenada and to showcase all the lovely fruits, vegetables, spices that Grenada has to offer. I've started a company about uh, five years ago called The Flavors of Grenada and it pretty much does exactly that. It's all the flavors of Grenada. And um, today we're going to be making, as you mentioned, uh, banana fosters, uh, spice banana fosters using our spiced rum, our cans brulee, spice rum, and our cans brulee banana rum. All right. And let me tell you, it's going to be quite a treat. So um, just definitely stay tuned, everyone. And um, we'll also be mixing a great hot toddy for you because I know all over the world, except for Grenada, it's kind of chilly. I heard that it's, it's um, all up in the Midwest. And so we're going to bring you a little warmth straight from the flavors of Grenada, straight from Grenada, the Isle of Spice. So that's pretty I'm much hosting. That is so true. I'm hosting. Thank you so much, Chef Belinda. I tell you, so true. We definitely need that hot toddy because I'm hosting from Toronto, Canada, and it's negative nine outside right now. So that yes. toddy is exactly what we need. And Rachel, you want to say hello? But Rachel's our mixologist. How are you, Rachel? Hello, I'm fine. Thank you so much for asking. Um, today, like Chef Belinda said, we're going to do a hot toddy. So like Chef Belinda, I grew up in the United States. However, I was born here in Grenada. So this is a representation, a representation of both of those kind of complexities of my personality. So we have a, a, a delicious, what I call the Captain Cider. So that will be showcasing, of course, our lovely cans, brulees, and our our spice that our island is known for, as well as a kind of traditional apple cider. Oh, very yes. nice. Thank you. We have all these lovely spices here. We have ginger, we have cinnamon, we have clove, we have allspice. And that's what you can find when you come to, to the spice aisle. Very nice. Thank you so much, ladies. Next, we have Chef Lisa Davis. Lisa, how are you? And welcome. Hi, and uh, thanks for having me. Merry Christmas to everyone. A Merry Christmas to you. And Merry Christmas. 
So Lucia, can you tell us also a little bit about yourself? I know you have, um, you are, you have some very unique items that you work with locally created that you're famous for. And I'd like you to tell us a little bit about that. And then what inspired your recipe for today? So um, I am a chocolatier, a rum aficionado or rum specialist here in Grenada. So I'll be sharing both of my passions to uh, the audience today. Um, and the Caribbean is known for, for both of these spices, particularly Grenada, the chocolate and the spices, and of course the rum. So we'll be pairing, marrying all of those together. I um, am Grenadian by parentage and heritage. And uh, as I've been living here for more than 15 years now, um, it's an absolutely wonderful place to live. And as I said before, in one of the interviews, we have absolutely everything here um, in terms of food, produce, raw material, cocoa, spices, everything. <laughs> it's all here. So I hope today I can show you a super simple, easy dessert to make for your Christmas table. Um, something that anybody can make. You can all have a lot of fun doing it. Well, looking forward to that. And Lisa's being modest. She's really the first lady of Grenada rum and the queen of chocolate. So we're really looking forward to seeing chocolate and rum being mixed. I know that is something that has been increasing in popularity recently. And we're really looking forward to really looking at that. I know Grenada has been affectionately known as the spice island of the Caribbean. And when we think about all the amazing spices and flavors that come out of Grenada, uh, this is definitely something that we can have on our Christmas and holidays tables this year. So we're really looking forward to finding simple and easy ways to do that. So I'm gonna go back, to, um, Lisa, stay tuned. I'm gonna go back to Chef Belinda because Chef Belinda's recipe is a little bit longer in time. So we're gonna start working with her. And then once we get back, we're gonna speak to you both ladies about flavors of Grenada when you were growing up. Like what recipes do you remember? What traditions at Christmas when it comes to culinary traditions that you remember that you can share with us? And just a little bit of, in terms of what inspired you, what inspired you to be a chocolate here? I think it's everybody's, every child's wish if we think about Charlie and the Chocolate Factory to be a chocolate here and doing that, her living is something very special. Well, and then as we, as we grow up, we know that we all want to become rum not rum drinkers, but rum experts. So you really have the perfect combination um, when it comes to indulgences and what people are looking for. So I'm really looking forward to speaking to you about that. But I know Chef Belinda is starting and we want to go back to her so we can see how she's beginning her recipes. So thank you so much, Lisa. We're going to get back to you shortly. Thank you. So Chef Belinda, we're back with you. <laughs> Yes, I've got started already. I started without you. <laughs> yes, I noticed. We noticed. So yes, tell us well, what you know. started so far so we can catch up. Oh, all I did was, um, and I'm sure that you guys have the recipe on for everyone to, to view, but um, I just mixed some flour, um, some salt, and um, a little sugar right here in my flour mix because I'm making the crepe batter, right? That's okay. what I'm making. And I, I, I put the dry ingredients in first so they can be incorporated even into the mixture, right? And then I have, I brought my eggs in here and my vanilla and my, a little bit of water, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm just gonna whisk those things up because what we're gonna do is we wanna add it slowly into our flour mixture. All right. Okay, and this is the crepe part of it. Now, of course, um, we're gonna mix it nice and slow mm -hmm. in with the, rec with, with the dry mix. Okay, anyone can do this at home. It's so dessert um, to have or a snack. All yeah, right. Yeah, you know, I like to snack. I don't know about you. Oh, yes, I love you. And especially after the year that we've had, I think snack yeah. has come to be <laughs> a very important pastime that we've all done this year. Right. <laughs> I agree. And so here I am. I'm just mixing everything all together. And what happens is, it's gonna take a little while for it to thicken up. Okay. And so we would have to leave it obviously to sit here um, to kind of bind together after we mix it for about 20 minutes. But on to the, the bananas foster part. And I went ahead and just kind of made some crepes in advance, but I want everyone to see how to make the batter. Mm -hmm. After this, we're just gonna spoon out a little bit of our batter in our, um, our saute pan, a non-stick pan, preferably, okay? 
and we put it on the medium heat. So we'll let that sit for a little while and we'll go over here and start on the um, filling, okay? Or what we're gonna put on top. Now I have a lot of wonderful things um, here today. I have nutmeg, everybody knows oh, yes. nutmeg, cinnamon, mm -hmm. butter. And so we're gonna brown those things. And I saw a take pan along with our brown sugar. Beautiful. Shuffle did you mind showing our viewers who may not know what the nutmeg seed looks like? I know you've had it yes. there on your display so they can see. It looks like mm -hmm. and um, it is a hard shell on the outside and I would have to crack it open for you. I'm not doing such a bad job. No, no, good, good job. And on the inside there, as you can see, there is the actual nutmeg. And when we take this part of it, and this is what we grate and ground into nutmeg. Thank okay? you. Okay. And then, uh, I have a little grater here. And this is pretty much what I, I do. And I sat here all day grinding this uh, nutmeg just for this. Mm -hmm. I'm just grind a little bit there. And we'll add some on top of our dish when we're through. That's a wonderful thing. smell. Thank you for that. Yes. So we're gonna get started. We're gonna turn on our stove. We just, you have to be very careful because we're dealing with um, rum and alcohol and flame. So what we're gonna do is put our, our butter into melts. In our saucepan. We're gonna add We're gonna add our brown sugar, our cinnamon, as we mentioned, mm -hmm. all together. And we're gonna let it kind of liquefy a little bit, bubble a little bit, caramelize a little bit, okay? This is the grown up version of banana pancakes. Yes, yeah, very similar. <laughs> As a child growing up, are there any um, are there any breakfast foods that really gave you comfort? That really that reminiscing now, you really said mm, that was so delicious. You remember your grandmother making it, your mom making it in the kitchen. Well, you know, um, believe it or not, my grandmother uh, used to like like hang on to her her um, her apron string while she made fried bakes. Oh yeah, I absolutely yeah. love them because they were just so they would come out so fluffy. Mm -hmm. and nice and hot and we would use um a lot of jam and my favorite jam is like guava jam oh yes oh my goodness yeah. and yeah. this is what i absolutely love and i still love today mm -hmm. you will see me just eating that just alone sometimes i just spoon the jelly in my mouth <laughs> okay. yes 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 so here we are we, we're, we're it's getting kind of liquidy now and and melted Mm -hmm. and that's what we want when keep it moving mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and you know in the caribbean we're also famous have always been famous for sugar as well right yes yes sugar yes. king and everything mm -hmm. so this is kind of what inspired this and here in grenada we have an abundance of bananas mm -hmm. yes and all kinds of bananas right so i this is how i was inspired to come up with this dish actually because it's all year round uh, we have that available to us. Okay. Okay, so I should basically um, showcase that. And um, another thing that's also the Caribbean islands as well is sorrow. Oh, yes. And that's something that I, I always remember as well. Mm -hmm. um, that hint of sorrow at Christmas. Mm -hmm. And now we make sour jam here. <laughs> And also, you know, as I said, I would just add that to my ba my bakes, my fried bakes. Mm. Delish. Delish. We were yesterday with one of our chefs, they were talking about sorrel as well. And I would tell both visitors and travel professionals alike that you do not go to anybody's home in the Caribbean during the holidays and not get a glass of sorrel and some fruitcake. You well, know, that, that is a that's right. And you know, and you know what the secret ingredient is? What's you know the secret and I'm going to add our bananas. It is spice, by the way. Yes, 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 yes. It yes. is spice. 
So then we, we just mix up all of our brown sugar. And with our, with our bananas. And just we caramelize all together. And the fun, fun part is about to begin. All right. Now, we're, looking, we're looking for that. Yes, the best part. Can you see that? Can you hear that? Can you oh, smell we that? We, oh, we wish we could smell it, but we can imagine what it <laughs> smells like with all those flavors together. I think we can definitely picture. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and what I, I like to add to this, mm -hmm. you know, the flavor of the This is where the magic happens. Yes. I just want to make sure my little lighter works. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Mechanical difficulties. Uh -oh. There we go. There we go. Right. So I'm going to add a little bit of our banana rock. This is our can filet banana. Beautiful. That we're gonna, that we're gonna put in first. And is that local? Is that local? Uh, is that local rum from Grenada? Yeah. Okay. It's made right here in Grenada. Okay. And you know, it's not found everywhere, but you can find it in some of the local stores in the states okay. and in Canada. And then okay. we add our spice rum there. All right. And hopefully. I'll get a little. There we have it. And what happens is you, you burn the, uh, the alcohol off, and you get that lovely, lovely rum flavor. For sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so, what we're going to do is add a pinch of our nutmeg. Mm -hmm. That just adds a, that just takes it up a notch. One of my favorite chefs in New Orleans says, bam. You know That's what that true. is? Yes, Emerald, Chef Emerald. <laughs> and I took the liberty of obviously making an advance um, a crepe so we can make sure to, to get, and this is what they look like, the crepes, okay? Yes. And I'm gonna go ahead, plate to be able to serve banana foxes. But in meanwhile, I'll give it a start. This is how we did that. We always remove the pan from the stove when we're using nonstick sprays mm -hmm. to make sure that we don't set ourselves on fire. Right. Okay. Uh-huh. I'm going to go to the back one. So we need a, we need something that's kind of comparable to the size of the pan. Yes. And I use a small saute pan. Okay. I'm going to take a little bit of a really pretty thin for the most part. And we kind of circulate around the whole pan like that. Mm -hmm. And it will start to cook itself and we're going to leave it there while we plate so we can get to the hot toddy of course oh yes okay so we're going to go ahead and plate our crepe very nice we serve them warm mm -hmm. and i like to kind of do them like this instead of build that being filled mm -hmm. Delightful. How are we doing over here? Do you see it? You see the look of that? We see we, we do, we do. It's nice and yes. thin, it's paper thin. thin. Yes. And that's what's happening. And it ends up to be obviously the finished product here. But we will continue and try to. Yes, 
So Chef Belinda, we've really had quite um, quite the month, the quite a few months with this COVID pandemic. How many yes. times, how many times during the pandemic have you made these crepes? It was it one of your go-to well, comfort foods? <laughs> Yes, it was actually, because like I said, we have bananas here and I absolutely love, love, love bananas. So, mm -hmm. so I'm just going to pour. All right. Start presentation. Very pretty plating. I just pour, I just love the sauce. That's really what's so nice mm -hmm. as well. And what um, sometimes what we can do Or what I usually like to eat it with is that nutmeg ice cream. But I have today. I have whipped cream. Don't put in there. Beautiful. And there you have it. And of Beautiful. course, as I mentioned, bam! There you have yes. it. Yes. Bananas Beautiful. fosters with a nutmeg cream. All right. And of course, utilizing our spiced rum, Cannes Belay spiced rum, and Cannes. Shuffle, do you mind showing us the bottles? Oh, yes, thank you. Perfect. Yeah, so people can know what to look for in the stores locally when they're here in North America. Very nice. And, and isn't that gorgeous? Look at look at all, look at this look at this label. It's so gorgeous. It's very pretty. Your Madras, your local Creole. Very Madras fancy. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna see. We're going to yes. And, um, we have also our. Uh, Toddy, yes. I'm not sure if you're ready for that yet. I am. I'm gonna but go. We have Rachel here. Yeah. So Rachel, if you give us a few minutes, I'm going to check in with Lisette, our first lady of Grenada Rum first, if you don't mind. Um, and then we'll get back to the hot toddy because I really want to talk to you guys too about how Grenada is doing um, after nine months of the pandemic, a little bit about what you guys are doing. And, and again, I really want to get to know you guys a little bit better as well. So what inspires you, what inspired your hot toddy and talk to you a little bit more. So give us a few seconds. We're going to check in with Lisa and get back to you. Thank you so much. Yes, absolutely. All right. Hi. Hi, Lisa. Welcome back. Hi, I was just watching Chef Belinda's feed. It looks so delicious. It does, it does. It really makes you want to, and it, it was so very simple to prepare. It really makes you want to go into the kitchen now and do that for dessert this evening. Exactly. Mm. So Lisa, tell us about our, our spiced chocolate truffles. Right. So I was thinking about chocolate. Chocolate can be a bit of a tricky um, product to really use for desserts. And some people get scared and they just don't bother. Um, and, and but the, the best way to, to get the feel of chocolate is to start off really simple with something that's fun, yummy, and easy to share. So if everyone's participating, it's a lot of fun. Okay. Um, what we're making today is um, some spiced chocolate truffles. And they're really easy to make any shape. They're, they're kind of organic, so you can make any shape you like. Um, again, it's really simple. You only need a few uh, ingredients, uh, cream, honey, um, honey, butter. And in this case, we're going to put putting some spices into it, um, really so that you can get that spice feeling. And if you like, you can make it boozy. It's up to you. You can either sip the rum or you can, you know, booze it up uh, and so you get some rum with the spice in the truffle. Okay. All right. So how do we start? I mean, we to tell us, um, I know your, your chocolate's local to, to Grenada. So how do we start? Well, the chocolate is not only local, but we're here today in my chocolate workshop. This is my chocolate studio and uh, uh, it's called Gabu Chocolate. Our brand is Gabu. It's part of Rumbo Retreat, so if anyone wants to purchase any of our chocolates, they can go to our website, Rumbo okay. Retreat. Thank you. Um, we have some some great uh, chocolate bars, mm -hmm. uh, and we do milk, dark, and white chocolate. So today we're going to be making these spiced um, chocolate truffles out of our dark chocolate. Okay. And my advice to everybody watching is to use a good quality dark chocolate. Here we make our chocolate bean to bar. So we use the Grenadian beans, we process them. Um, 
milling them and, and just some simple sugar. We don't do anything else to them. And that's what you want. You want good quality organic uh, chocolate, about 60 to 70%, that's a safe place to play, um, without hardening agents. When you have hardening agents in the chocolate, it starts adding other characteristics and it can ruin the pliability when you're rolling your, your truffles. Okay, so we really want it really nice and simple, organic, clean. Yeah, I mean, this is one of our chocolate bars here. And this, I mean, yeah, if you can get it tempered, like just when you buy your chocolate bar, that's great. If not, just some good quality baking cocoa also can work if that's what's available to you in the US, but not Hershey's or anything like that. Cause that's actually not, yeah, like it's not 60% chocolate. Right. So do you, do you mind telling us a little bit about even the name that you came up with and a little bit about the factory, your, but your workshop, your chocolate workshop. Okay, so the, the, the word Gabu actually means um, cocoa. So before um, the Europeans sort of came in and colonized the, the Lesser Antilles, there were uh, some inhabitants here who were mixed Carib as well as uh, Kalinago, so they were the native people here. And they would travel between St. Vincent um, along the islands to Grenada and up the chain. They were a bit nomadic, but they used to, I was fascinated by them because there's not much history recorded uh, about these Garifuna people. They've ended up now in Honduras and Belize because they've kind of had to keep going. But they did start in St. Vincent and moved island to island and they traded things that they got. Um, and one of the things was cocoa. And, and they've been drinking a cocoa drink way before, but you know, chocolate and cocoa was popular. So I thought it was such an honor to name sure. the um, chocolate company after these hybrid native people. Um, called Garifuna people, and their word for uh, cocoa is Gabu. And it keeps the history alive, you know, and it's so important for us to continue those traditions. And Absolutely. so, no, that's beautiful. Uh, Lisa, the other thing I wanted to ask you, um, if for visitors, I know you do a rum boat retreat. Uh, if you can talk a little bit about that, and then let us also know um, if there are private tours or personal tours that visitors can do once they get to Grenada. One of the things that we are finding that's coming out since the pant, as a result of the pandemic, is really the intimacy that people would love to have with the product when they visit. And yeah. um, I think I think having this personalized chocolate service is something that's very extraordinary. Um, we also, as you can imagine, when visitors from around the world think about the Caribbean, they typically think of it as a perfect wedding or honeymoon destination. And what can be more sexier than having chocolate and rum as a wedding gift or a boutonniere gift or something like that? So um, after we do our recipe and our cooking, our cooking, our cooking class with you, I'd love to be able to talk a little bit about that as well. Oh. Thank you. All right. So we have our, our good quality chocolate um, in front of us. And yes. we have our cutting board and a really sharp knife. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can use a sharp knife. You, know, you, you What you're really trying to do with this is you just want to just chip it up. So you can even break it if you like, but you're just chipping it up. Okay. Okay. So, and you want to chip it up as fine as possible, just like this. Okay. And you're going to do that for the whole bar, all right? So we, don't um, want it to, we don't want to put it in a food process or anything like that, because then it'll be too fine, correct? Yeah, it's okay. not necessary to put it into a process, okay. to be honest. Okay. Um, just chip it up. Or, as I said, this is great to do with family and friends, so you can just break it up with your hands and then, and then chip it, you know, slowly so that it's really, really small. Okay. It's, really, um, it's not so important about how it's done, but it's the fact that it is done and okay. done together. Okay. So I've cheated a little bit because it's a lot of chocolate and I've chipped some up myself. And so that's really what you want it to look like. Okay. Okay. Because what we're going to do is we're going to start warming the rest of our products up and melting this chocolate down. Now, if you are a chef or you're somebody who loves the kitchen and you know chocolate already, you can start off with this as melted chocolate. It just makes the next step a bit easier. But I just think that for those who aren't, you know, um, chocolate savvy, then you can always just chip it up like this. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah, just keep here, one sec. 
Okay, I just had to take that out of the chat. Okay, so what we want is we're going to have 200 mils of whipping cream or double cream, um, depending on where you're from. They're called different things, but whipping cream, not heavy cream. Heavy cream, you can use heavy cream, but I just find it's a bit heavier. It's a little higher in fat content. Okay. So whipping cream works really well. Okay, so the 35% cream is what we're looking exactly. for. Perfect, okay. Yeah, so you want 200 mils of that. And you're going to have 50 grams of honey. In Grenada, we have excellent honey. We are known for our honey. It's pure and very clean to taste. So um, some 50 grams of good quality honey as well. All right. So we're going to pour our cream. Along with our honey. into our pan. And then what we want to do is spice this cream up because um, that's what we're going to use as the base of our ganache. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to bring to you in a moment some, some spices, of course, that Grenada is famous for. Nutmeg is the first one. You really want to put just about half a teaspoon of nutmeg, depending on how spicy you want it. I like to eat great nutmeg immediately before, um, before heating it or doing anything with it, because all of the aroma and the flavor of the nutmeg comes out once you grate it. So if you have it pre-ground, I always find that it, the, the, the sense or the smell of it becomes a bit dark. Okay, so about a half teaspoon of nutmeg and some cinnamon. I'm going to put about three or four little chunks of cinnamon. In Grenada, we have the cassia bark, but I'm not sure what you, you, our, our watchers and listeners will have. So any cinnamon will do as long as it gives you that strong cinnamon flavor. You can use ground cinnamon if you don't have cinnamon bark available to you. Okay. And again, some orange peel. Yes. You're just going to twist it to release some of that orangey flavor. Mm -hmm. And some West Indian bay leaf. Um, we call that bottom hair. Okay. Uh, the West Indian bay leaf is quite different from the other type of bay leaf that you may commonly get. If you do come to Grenada or go anywhere within the West Indies, make sure you invest in some of our bay leaf. It is one of the best. So again, we're just going to crush that just to release some of the flavors. Cardamom. Cardamom is super delicious. And what you want to do with your cardamom is just release some of the pods. So just pop one or two pods in there. Okay. Just press it to release some of the flavors within that. Good. So that's our spices within our cream along with our honey. We're going to put that on to heat up just a little. Mm -hmm. And it's important when you're making the cream to for this ganache or for these truffles, that you don't want the cream to boil. Okay. You kind of just want to get it just before it comes off the boil. Mm -hmm. If you let it boil up too much, what will happen is it will make your chocolate ganache a bit too hard. So when you're rolling it, it kind of breaks up. And okay. you don't want that. You want to keep some of the fat and the pliability within it. So when we're thinking it in terms of the pliability, are we thinking some to the consistency of Play-Doh or something? Yes. Of, okay, all right. You want something like something like Play-Doh, but you want a bit of elasticity within it. Okay. Yeah. Most of us with kids understand the Play-Doh um, comparison. Yeah. So Lisa, tell me, how did you, how did you, um, what inspired you to become a chocolatier? Or were you the first lady of rum first before you became the chocolatier? What yeah, so my, my passion is completely rum. Okay. Um, but what happened is um, living within Grenada, there's cocoa absolutely everywhere. And I live in rural Grenada. So I'm 
surrounded by um, by Coco everywhere I go. Um, but I was very fortunate also to work on the board of the first chocolate company in Grenada. And so it opened up my knowledge of just how chocolate works from the bean and the processing stage into, you know, adding the value and making good quality chocolate. And I did adding to that really um, and learning new techniques with various different chefs um, and working within teams in uh, with different chocolatiers and uh, until I managed to um, get to where I want. We now custom make some beautiful bonbons for people in Grenada for weddings as well. So you yeah. mentioned yes. and special occasions. So if you come a bit closer, just let them see. We're beginning to get some heat in our cream, which is good. And you can add, you can add ginger, you can add clove. I mean, I've just kept it a bit simple here just to get those main flavors out, but ginger and clove is another really good one that we tend to put. So as you can see, we're getting a bit of steam coming off of that. So are we looking, or so we're probably sitting here now for about eight minutes or so? When you, ask uh, you want to keep an eye on it because it, it begins to boil off really quickly. Okay. So that's why I'm not moving away from it because it boils off so quickly. And then before you know it, you've got a boiling pot of cream in it and then you've okay. missed that moment. Okay. So you really want to keep an eye on it and just keep stirring it so that your honey doesn't settle to the bottom and begin to caramelize and burn. Understood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I know it's a bit boring, everyone, but it's one of those necessary things for you to learn to watch so that you don't end up burning and caramelizing our cream. And you do want it to be hot. I think we're beginning to get some movement. As I said, this is super, Delicious, simple, and wonderful to pair with rum. Okay. Yep, so you can see those bubbles. Mm -hmm. At that point, we're going to turn it off. Okay. It can boil off too much. Great. So, of course, we've got all of those lovely aromatic spices within it. You don't want to end up in your chocolate, so you'll sift it just to ensure. And then you want to stir. You want to stir all your chocolate. In the beginning, when you're stirring, you may find it looks like it's curdling. That's normal. Okay. Keep stirring. All right. It gets that kind of curdly look. You might think, oh my God, my chocolate's not melting. Stop panicking. Am I burning my chocolate? No, you're not. Because what begins to happen is you start getting this beautiful, glossy, almost like satin look. Mm -hmm. And that's when you know you're on the right track and you'll keep stirring it until you're totally solid chocolate free. So lovely. Yes. And the smell that comes from it. Oh my God, because you've got that really good quality cocoa yeah. along with um, those spices. They really are showing up. And what happens with the ganache is the longer you leave it, the more the spice flavors begin to elevate. So when you, we're going to, once we're finished with this, we're going to leave it in the fridge for about two hours or overnight, as I would suggest. Okay. And if you do um, that, then you'll find that the this, this flavor of the spices become even louder. Mm -hmm. Just as it settles, it's almost like everything marries into one. Mm -hmm. So wonderful, all of our chocolate is melted. And while it's still warm, you want to add some of some butter, 50 grams of butter. Is it salted or unsalted better? Please, yes. Thank you for mentioning that. 
So you've got some unsalted butter in there. And again, this is gonna add some shine and gloss to our ganache. Okay. That just looks so delicious. I'm reminded <laughs> of one of the COVID stats this year that chocolate sales have increased over 300% over the pandemic. Of course and, they have. And there's a reason for that, right? Of course. I mean, you know, um, over here at Gabu, we're very busy uh, meeting people with pastry orders and chocolate orders for special occasions. It's the best way to say thank you. It's... um really, really wonderful. I mean, everybody loves chocolate. I mean, there are a few people who surprise me and they go, don't eat chocolate. And I do think, what strange people. Yeah, but <laughs> you're missing out on half of your life there. Yeah. So that's what we want our chocolate to look like. Very Super nice. shiny and have this wonderful, um, yeah, it's, it's shiny and, and it almost looks a bit oily, but it's not oily. Okay. It, it just is it's, it's the perfect liquidity yeah. all right so that's we're gonna what you should do at this point is cover it with a bit of cling film to stop the skin from forming mm -hmm. okay and i've got one that i made a bit earlier oh. okay. so that will be after your two hour rest or overnight rest to just allow the volume of that uh spice to really come through. The next stage, what we're going to do is roll our chocolate. So this is an important stage and this is really the part where everybody can get involved and just have a good old time. When you're rolling the chocolate, you can choose the type of topping you want. So I've got some little calabashes here um, in Grenada and within, within the Caribbean, a calabash is like a Rasta man's bowl. So, um, and it's great for, it's got a really good amount of space so you, you can roll your truffles around. So in here, I've got some cocoa powder with a bit of icing sugar and a little bit of cinnamon, ground cinnamon, just to add that extra spice. You can, again, spice up your cocoa powder with whatever you like. If clove is your thing, cinnamon, um, ginger, you can make them a bit more gingery if you like up to you, but you add it to your cocoa powder with some icing sugar. With the, when you say it was equal parts of the cocoa powder, ice and sugar, or? No, okay. uh, yeah, oh, um, no, actually. So it's two spoons of cocoa powder to one spoon of icing sugar, please. Okay, okay. So it's too sickly sweet and that's not really, you want it to be a little bit bitter. Okay. Or you can just put some nuts, nuts. I mean, these are pistachio nuts, great for that crunch. You can put anything on the top of it if you want crunch rather than sort of smoothness. As you can see here, we've got uh, the dusted cocoa powder. Mm -hmm. You can also um, keep some of your flakes from your, um, when you were cutting up your chocolate and you can roll it in some flakes as well. That's, if you... yeah, that's a good idea to use the shavings. In... Yeah, again, the shavings are great. They've got a little bit of crunch if it's a tempered chocolate. Mm -hmm. So, as you can see here, our chocolate has sat. It's nice and firm to touch. And this is really the part where you and your friends will have a good time. Use gloves because it can get a bit messy. That's all the fun of it. So what you want to do is pull Use your fingertips to shape it. Remember, like you said, Play-Doh. Mm -hmm. Use the, the sort of length of your fingers to roll it and in to the cocoa powder. We'll just do another one. So, yep. Yeah. Roll. And you can make them as big or as small as you want. Okay. Sometimes I'm small and then people go, what is this? We need more. Yes, I know. So that's them, just, you just, you know, rustle them around within your cocoa powder. And bingo. Very, very nice. So easy, so simple. Now, they are a bit soft like this, even though they have sat in the fridge. So you'll want to put them in the, in the fridge again. Okay. Just 
they can set and get really nice and firm because your hands um, will almost melt that chocolate a bit. And yeah. as you may know or may not know that chocolate melts at body temperature. So you want to try and handle it as minimal as possible and refrigerate it as quickly as possible. Here in my chocolate studio, we are always on AC on about 18 degrees. And chocolate's great to work with at 18 degrees. Okay. All right. So as I said, at the point when you're making your ganache, you can add a capful of rum if you'd like to make it a bit boozy with your spice. And then when it sets, it will have a rum flavor within it. Okay. Also pair it with the rum. I'm a bit of a purist, and so I like to pair things rather than mix them. Mm -hmm. So I like, I generally like to eat it with the spice and then enjoy the rum alone. But it's completely down to you. Now you've got the 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 ingredients and how to do it. You can play around with it. So Chef Lisa, for the portions that we did just now, um, would that make in terms of if we're using the strawberry as a, si a guide for size, would that make about 20 strawberries, you think? Strawberry sized truffles? Oh no, make about 50. Oh my gosh, even better. Yeah, <laughs> this is really something for the table, for the spread, for family and friends. Mm -hmm. You know, people will be popping these in their mouth constantly throughout. And it's the most beautiful thing to bring out a tray with all these truffles packed high and a really good quality aged rum with it because it just means the adults can indulge in that and the kids can enjoy the chocolate alone. So can you tell us a little bit about the rum that you recommended that we pair this with? Well that's what I'm excited about. So I'm going to move all these bits to the sun. So today I have chosen a Grenadian rum called Clark Score and how I would usually serve it is I would pop one of those truffles in a shot glass um, and, and uh, put, you know, with a, with a toothpick so that the person can enjoy it. And then we taste our rum. Now, this is a 12 year old. It's super delicious. It's well aged. And Grenadian rums are well known for their lightness. So they're quite light, citrusy and a bit floral. They're not as deep and bassy as Bajan and Jamaican rums. Okay. So works really, really well with your spices, especially your lighter end of spices like uh, ginger and so on, or your citrusy notes like your orange peel. That's why I put it in there, just to bring those flavors out. But what's really nice about this particular run, the number 37, is it's got a long finish. And that finish is a bit spicy. So, You want to be generous when you're drinking this. Don't, don't uh, be too mean. Um, but on the nose, of course, because it's aged, it's aged for 12 years, you've got that barrel. But it is a bit chocolatey. And you've got almost like dried fruit. Mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of bursting with dried fruit, which reminds you of Christmas anyway. But then underneath that, you've got those citrusy notes like your orange peel and so on. Mm -hmm. And so that pairs so well with the chocolate that we've made. You don't have to always go for a spiced rum because you may find that if you find the right kind of rum, the rum is spicy enough that you don't need to have a spiced rum. Okay. So on the front, it's quite sweet. Immediately when you taste the rum to the tip of your tongue, you'll notice it's quite sweet. And then you get a burst of acidity and that comes from that dried fruit flavor. And if you keep it in your mouth for a moment longer, then you are kind of finished with these citrusy notes. Mm -hmm. And finally, almost a bit leathery or chocolatey, not quite toffee. And then that little burn at the end, but it's ever so slight. Um, and that is that black pepper, um, that spiciness that I was talking about, that ginger. It could even be the warmth of the ginger. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, we said, I can't tell you how satisfied. I'm not even there to try anything and I can taste everything. I can't tell you how satisfied I am with that. Yeah. So tell me, we were talking about Clark's Court and that's a 12 year old that you're serving. Can you tell me what other um, categories of rum that Clark's mm -hmm. Court carries so we can... 
So the number 37 comes in a few different labels because they're all limited edition. Okay. This is a 12 year old. So I've chosen the oldest of their line, but they do an eight year old. Um, and I think they've got another one out, which is seven. So okay. they, they, have, they have got younger versions of the same thing. The 37 is really to celebrate the 37 years of independence in Grenada. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's what that. Um, but do look for the 12 years because, again, as I said, it's limited edition and it is one of a kind. In the USA, for our American uh, uh, viewers, in the USA, finding this may be a bit of a trick because I do know that Clarksville are currently changing some distribution um, and they're trying to get it. I think they're starting off again in New Jersey and moving out. Um, if you want it, contact them um, online or come to Grenada. I was going to say that's very easy to get. We know where to get it. I was just going to suggest that as well to our listeners. But Lisa, we're going to check back in with you because when I get back with you, I really want you to talk about a little bit. If you do tours at your talk studio, we want to know that. We want to know what, you're, what you'll be serving on your Christmas table this year. And if there are any secrets that um, our viewers just don't know about Grenada that you can share with us. All right. Sure. So I'm going to check back in very quickly with Chef Belinda and Rachel. I know Rachel's um, ready to serve up her hot toddy. And it's good to get that little quick um, rum lesson from you. And I also want you to tell us a little bit about your rum retreats and what life looks like post-COVID. Okay. We know that um, we are well on our way now, now that we have the vaccines. And, and really talk about what it's like um, to invite people back home. You know, we're looking forward to hearing your, your thoughts on that. So uh, we'll be back with you shortly. And Rachel, are you ready? Cheers. Rachel, yeah. are you ready to go? Absolutely. I am totally ready. Perfect. Perfect. So sorry about that. But, you know, we wanted to hear a little bit about the chocolate, the truffles and the rum. And we're looking forward to the cocktails. And it looks like Renita has a really wide selection of rums companies there. I, I know you guys are working with Kane. So we are looking forward to hearing a little bit more about that as well, because it is the spirits time for the whole yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So, of course, we are showcasing our wonderful Cannes Brulee Rum. Mm -hmm. And, of course, they use some delicious, wonderful spice that our island is known for. They do source their spice from St. David's, and I am talking about their cinnamon. Of course, anyone in the States are free to order from GrenadaRums.com. And like I said, this particular cocktail is just a blending of my... Um, childhood memories mm -hmm. as um, the host was asking earlier, some of your favorite childhood memories, apple cider is absolutely that. Mm -hmm. It is a fall fruit. And of course it is accentuated with our fall spices that Grenada is absolutely known for. Over here we have some of our nutmeg, mm -hmm. our star anise, mm -hmm. our clove, and our cinnamon. Mm -hmm. which is always the showstopper for any desserts, even savory meals, as well as cocktails. So today what we did was we have a warm apple cider. Like I said, I call this particular drink the captain's brew. Mm -hmm. I like to uh, reimagine traditional things. So this is my reimagining of what a uh, pirate Christmas may have been like. We already know that they enjoy rum. Of course, spice rum are some of the more favorite rums that we do know of. Mm -hmm. So we have this warm apple cider here. You can get it from the store. It can be store bought. However, I did make mine fresh oh. and you do not need anything more than maybe about five apples, a half an orange. As I said, some spice to add flavor, you simmer that for two hours and you strain it off clean and you have your apple cider. Oh, so we're good. gonna just pour that now mm -hmm. into our glasses. We have a wonderful ladle here. So we're just gonna ladle that in. So of course you will have your hot toddy glass or you can even do something super simple and comfortable like your coffee mug at home. Mm -hmm. And we're going to just rest this right on top and fill our next glass also because drinking is always fun when you have company. So that is the truth. So we're just going to fill in our second glass. Here we are. Of course, we have some wonderful 
apple cinnamon sticks mm -hmm. as garnish to bring out that flavor. On top of that, I am going to add one and a half ounces of our cans brulee rum. Mm -hmm. I'm going to that's actually spice use this rum. one. And that's the spice that, that you're that's has spice been rum. enjoyed many times. Okay. So we're just going to add in that ounce and a half. You can add it before or after. Okay. I do choose to add it right after, kind of like a float right on top. Rachel, when you are preparing your apple cider fresh, is that something that we could also do in a slow cooker and leave on for a few hours? Absolutely. Okay. So you could do your slow cooker. You can do your crock pot. Mm -hmm. Of course, I did a saucepan, but it is up to you. So you will just adjust your timing okay. here for okay. when okay. you're going to put it in the crock pot. And I would like to say, if you are not just making two glasses like I have and would like to make a bigger batch, that's absolutely fine. I would then suggest you use 10 to 12 apples and then two whole oranges. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So right on top of that. Um, you can play with your garnish. You can um, get creative and do a little apple crumble top, which would be delicious. Or you can just come on top with some nutmeg. I already have mine's pre prep mm -hmm. in a shaker, a nutmeg and spice. Just a little shake there. And there you are, ready to enjoy your captain's brew. Mm -hmm. Of course. We have our nice cinnamon stick there in case you want to use it as a little stirrer yeah. to get your sipping going. Oh, yes. Fantastic. So I'll just pass it over to the lovely Chef Belinda and oh. let her get a little taste of that. Yeah. This is my, my favorite part. Cheers, ladies. Oh, cheers. It actually smells so fine. Yes. Wow. Really hot and spicy. Let's like warm inside now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to let everybody know this is our reigning champion for 2020, our virtual mixology competition, which we had in July of this year. Uh, it was our first virtual competition here in Grenada with the flavors of Grenada. And Rachel is our star. And she okay. won um, six weeks of competition. Amazing. And she always comes up with creative spicy drinks. And this one's. Oh, so congratulations. Great. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. So, yeah. so tell me something, ladies. If we, we spoke a little bit about uh, sorrel and sorrel being in the, the welcome and drink in the Caribbean when it comes to the holidays, what rum would you add to the sorrel if you were doing a sorrel cocktail? Well, you know what, I, what we're going to say, right? Cannes Brulee spice, spice rum. rum. Spice rum, okay. Absolutely. Right, yeah. because, because that's what's actually put into the um, sorrel anyway. Um, they put a little bit of spice in it. And when I say spice, I mean spice. Oh, it's nice. Um, oh, oh, that's all. Oh, yeah. oh, you can oh, see yeah. it. Yeah, we see it. That's the cinnamon yeah. stick. That's mm -hmm. right. Okay. And um, you mu you must try it. So in uh, in the sorrel, they, they put cinnamon, they put um, nutmeg, they put um, a, a little bit of bourbon day and these kind of things, clove. So mm -hmm. we just add our spice rum, just give it a little spike flavor, additional flavor. So that's the one that I would use. What about you? I absolutely agree. Um, what I really like about the spice rum is like you said, it has all its incorporation of spice that can be used in a wide a range and wide variety of cocktails, as well as culinary treats, as you've seen with our delicious uh, Foster's crepes, of course, um, showcasing this wonderful rum. And that's just the tip. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right. So I'm hoping that you might, um, some folks might come down to Grenada during the holidays, which whether it's 20 and 21, mm -hmm. uh, 21 or 22, and enjoy Christmas with us and um, all the lovely things that we have to offer here in Grenada. And of course, don't forget to order some of this wonderful rum as a Christmas gift so that your friends and family can make some of their favorite dishes. And of course, you can get it at GrenadaRums.com. All right. Well, Rachel, I have a quick question for you. Um, why did you decide to become a mixologist? That's a good question. 
Um, I just love creativity and I love flavors. I have a, a, um, a large palate. I don't like to restrict myself. And being a mixologist allows me to play. Okay. It allows me that free space to dip and dabble and throw together flavors that I may not have known would have worked mm -hmm. or um, things I may just surprise others. And I, like I said, I enjoy using the Cannes Brulee Spice Rum. Um, I just recently did a wonderful cocktail with that called Candy Ring. I think it pairs so wonderful with um, things like coconut cream, uh, fresh ginger, those type of um, accents to it work wonderful. All right. Now, Rachel, do you, are you on social media? Do you, are you on Instagram? Can we find some of your work on Instagram? How Absolutely. Can... I am. Um, my many entries, of course, during the Flavors of Grenada's Mixology competition. And you can find me at Reishi underscore the Mixologist at Instagram. So that's Rachie, R-A-C-H-I-E underscore the mixologist. So Rachel, tell us, what are you drinking yes. at the holiday? And what are you serving? So, uh, other, than, other than my cans brulee, <laughs> <laughs> um, which I, um, I, any, uh, I have already started that tradition of anyone passing. That's the first thing I do. I pull out my mother passed the other day. I said, have you had some spice rum yet? Come and get a little piece of Christmas. And so I gave her a little sip because you know, these are the things that we do think about with Christmas, that spiciness, that warmth, that kind of exuberance that we get from some of these wonderful foods that of course do trigger their in Well, Rachel, I, I hope you have enough bottles because we're coming. So you just opened up the door and we Absolutely. are coming. And like I said, even if you cannot make the trip, do not forget to go to GrenadaRums.com and get you not only their spice rum, their banana rum. Of course, Cannes Brulee have a wide variety. And I have heard a little secret. Very soon, they will be coming out with some of their vintage hidden stock. Oh, beautiful. so let's look out for that. Beautiful. We'll look and thank you for sharing that secret with us. We promise not to tell anybody. We'll keep that for ourselves. <laughs> tell everybody. <laughs> and Chef Belinda, oh, tell yeah. us a little bit what's on the menu at um, for Christmas at your house. And then what is on the menu at Flavors for Life? We, we, we want to know. We want to we want to get a taste. Well, well, this well this year we, we're doing something um, for the holiday season all across Grenada, and we are also like kind of letting it out to the world so they can join us on a Facebook Live. We have something called Flavors, uh, the Taste of Flavors, and where we get together in different, and so we can we can kind of showcase that we um, have through the holidays and of course we have the, the the ham the turkey instead of cranberry sauce we're using sorrel uh, a sorrel cranberry sauce you know we try to uh, mix it up a little bit we have um, different um, flavors like kalaloo quiche um, with pimento mm -hmm. um, just like so many um, different flavorful things that um, by bits and pieces that you can get at, at um, the table like an array of different array of different people here in Grenada who create some really really amazing flavors um, in the jams and the jellies the local wine seafood uh, sea grape wine jamun there's a fruit called jamun which is found in the center of Grenada the center of, of the island and we utilize that um, to make wine yeah. and so many different things. We also have different hot sauces, like guava hot sauce, pineapple um, hot sauce. So these kind of things that you get, get when you come to the um, Taste of Flavors through the holiday season, every Saturday, all the way through Christmas. Right. Can, um, you four or five can, different can you tell us the dates and how we can find you on Facebook Live so we can follow you, please? Yes, um, December 5th, December 12th, and, and December um, 19th. Okay. Um, of, of this year and January uh, of next year. We're still working on that date, but you can find us at Flavors of Grenada um, on Facebook and on Instagram yeah. or Chef Belinda GND on Instagram. And okay. we will be showcasing a lot of um, different uh, images and on Facebook Live, Flavors of Grenada. Where you're going to have so, such a busy uh, time leading up to Christmas. I'm curious to know what's going to be on your dinner table for Christmas. Oh, wow. 
think I'm just going to be resting. All right. So, okay. <laughs> no, all dinner right. table. We're going to have uh, all kinds of um, delicious um, things. You know, we, we're utilizing, obviously, the, the fruits, vegetables, and which is here. I mean, we, we, for breakfast, we're having sour steaks. You know, with the jam. Remember, I told you. Yeah, well, the jelly. Yeah, the small jam. Yes, I to totally love that. And uh, smoked herring. Uh, of course, the ham, as I mentioned, and I make this amazing kind of um, ginger, uh, orange ginger sauce glaze for the ham, and it's amazing. Yes. Yeah, so this is what I'm having my on my my Christmas table, and I'm inviting lots of my friends over. And uh, we're gonna don't have to wear masks. We're gonna make sure that they're quarantined for 14 days. I haven't seen them in a while. Right. And so <laughs> they're gonna come on by and we're gonna enjoy um, nice Christmas. And I'm inviting Rachel here over as well. Here you go, here you go. <laughs> well, please save a seat for us. The folks at task are gonna be there. So please save a seat for us. You know, thank okay. you so much ladies. Don't leave just yet. We wanna see your final goodbyes, but we are gonna touch base back with Lisa. Um, so don't, don't leave just yet, because we do want to do okay. a final showing of the plates. And okay, wonderful. all right, no problem. Highly set. Are you hungry? No, they've eaten all of my truffles that I made. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I don't know if there's going to be any showing of the plate. Don't uh -oh. worry. Uh, all right. All right. So tell us. So tell us about um, uh, for our viewers that are interested in coming to Grenada, doing a tour of the chocolate studio. Uh, do you ship? Most importantly, do you ship your chocolate to North America? That's definitely something we're very keen on knowing. Um, and what is on your Christmas table this Christmas as well? Okay. So. Um, in terms of tours to the chocolate studios, absolutely. We are very open to having visitors once they follow all the protocols, they're very welcome to come in and see how we make our bonbons and um, how we even make our chocolate. So, so they can see from the beginning of the process. Um, also, uh, Rum Boat Retreat will, will be open for pairings and maybe eating, but not quite open just yet in terms of the guest house. We are taking it slow and trying to figure out whether it's safe. And obviously, our staff are our greatest asset, so we do have to take care of them first. Um, but all I would say to people is email us. We're, we're very approachable. Email us and we'll have a conversation. Try and meet people with where they are and what they want to see and do when they come to Grenada. And are we able um, to find you on social media as well? Yeah, they can go to rumboatretreat.com. Uh, they can go to Rumboat Retreat on Instagram, Rumboat Retreat on Facebook, and um, all the others, TikTok and all the rest. And um, uh, Gabu is only on Instagram. You can see our catalog of the kind of chocolate products we do. So if you look up Gabu Chocolates or just Gabu on Instagram, you should find us. Um, and, and you get yeah, exactly, you can see what we do there. I think we do have a Facebook, but it isn't as active as our Instagram. Okay, all right. Page on our run boat retreat site. Okay. And In then, terms of what we're having for Christmas, well, of course, black cake. Yes. Yes. Um, we're making some panettones, um, mince pies. Uh, and then, of course, for the savouries, turkey, um, salt ham. Uh, and lamb, that's one of my favorite meats. Uh, we're having sea grape jelly. Uh, I, I use that instead of uh, cranberry. Yeah. Uh, coleslaw. Noki. We're doing a sweet potato gnocchi. Oh, very nice. There's, so There's so many other things. The table will be packed, will be full. But the most important thing is we'll have a dessert table, chocolate table. So we'll have a lot of chocolatey things. I think everyone will be chocolated out. Well, I have to tell you, um, that sea grape jelly is something that seems very unique. I never thought of that. It's one of my favorite fruits growing up ah. in the Caribbean is that sea grape. So that would definitely make an amazing condiment um, yeah. on that Christmas table. And you've also so inspired me to really get my son, who some of you may have seen popping in and out because he's an aspiring chef. And he heard ah. chocolate, so he stayed into the room longer than I expected. I'm really looking forward. We brought our elf on the shelf out yesterday. So making truffles with chippy, 
will be one of the things that we do as yeah. we do the countdown for Christmas. But as you're right, it's such a unique thing to do with friends and family that really brings us together. And this has been such a challenging year for all of us. And we at TAS has really wanted to make sure that our travel advisors, our clients, people who've had a love and affinity to the Caribbean really get to see some of the special people behind the scenes and the people that make our product, the Caribbean, so special. You ladies have done that and we can't thank you enough for joining us as you participated. Thank you in thank our you. 12 days of cooking festival. You really brought um, an indulgence. You know, typically people think of the Caribbean, we think of fish and fresh fruit only. And there are so many other flavors to the Caribbean that really make our homes such a unique place. And you guys were able to deliver that both in a bottle, many bottles of spirits of Christmas and, and both in the indulges. And, and sometimes we just really need to take that time off and, and just to breathe and indulge the sweetness of our islands. And you guys really delivered that tonight. And we are very, very grateful. I don't know if we can get Chef Belinda and Rachel back on as well. I just wanted to say to all you ladies, thank you for making this Christmas so special for us. We look forward to continue to, to send clients to your destinations and to support your businesses. One of the things that we can do in this season of giving is really doing very simple things like following you guys, liking you guys, commenting on your post, making sure that we continue to make you guys very relevant because that's the way that we can support our small businesses in the Caribbean and making sure that we bring to our wider community something very special, something very unique, and definitely a chocolate studio and rum tasting and a rum retreat. I was going to say one last thing. Yes, you can order our chocolate online on the Rum Boat Retreat website. Perfect. Uh, it, it, we do the bars and uh, some of the slightly the truffles but they're they're perfected and they're really like chocolate air style we dip them in chocolate and okay. so they're a bit more posh um so you can get those from our website and uh the name of the studio is gabu g-a-b-u and you can find us on instagram we will reply to you if you inquire but as i said go to rumboatretreat.com and you can inquire again about the chocolate too well lisa we have a request for the secret jelly so if you could send that to us, we have a request. Uh, we would love great we, jelly. Very happy to do so. We will love that. And I'm just going to go check just to make sure there aren't any questions that I missed. We have quite a few people online that are asking. Um, well, Erica, let me use the opportunity while you get your questions together. Thank you. To um, Good evening, everyone. I'm Dorit Whitlock with uh, Travel Advisor Selling the Caribbean. And I wanna welcome everyone for joining. I've seen some familiar names that have been following us every day, including my mother, who absolutely, I know I'm gonna get a call tomorrow, Lisette, about that sea grape jam, because my mother is into jam. So I know, I can almost, I can almost tell you that you may be getting some calls, but... Yeah. Um, I wanna thank everyone for joining us. And oh my goodness, I can't thank these two wonderful chefs enough. Uh, it just hit me while I was sitting here listening to you guys, that you guys are given a free virtual tour. You know, this is what you would get if you went to Grenada and came on your rumboat tour or you did one of Chef Belinda's tours, which I know you guys do. So, yeah. um, you know, I really wish that we had more travel advisors logged on because the react, you know, and hopefully, they will refer more of their clients to see, you know, to engage in these types of um, initiatives. Because as I sat here, it reminded me of some of my greatest vacations where you went, you know, when you go, where you go on food tours and you guys are, you know, this is of a very high standard, very exciting. And oh, the, um, the mixologist, she can mix my drink anytime. And the minute she came on, I said that she is a serious, mixologist. She knows her trade, very engaging. You guys did a phenomenal job and you're great, great uh, ambassadors for Grenada. You, you really, really made your, um, your country proud. And um, we look forward to working with you again in the future. And of course, I'm headed to Grenada. Uh, you know, you guys have made me, um, want, I went to Grenada once in my life and I can't wait to come back. Um, so thank you, thank you. Um, hopefully we will have lots of travel 
advisors sending you business and indulging in your in the products that you offer. Just some housekeeping um, announcements. We do this again. It's 12 days. This was day three and we are, it's getting even more exciting. I like the variety, you know, we've had the, the, the marvelous entrees, um, but today was nice and light with some treats that everyone can indulge in. And tomorrow we are, uh, I don't know, are we sailing or are we flying, Eric, on this virtual tour? We are whatever, flying. Whatever your preference, whether you're cruising, you're flying, it's a virtual tour. You can, you can pick. But we are going north to Haiti. And wow. so we will have some sensational Haitian chefs. Um, tomorrow, um, I've seen both of them perform in the past. Uh, they're going to bring us the Creole flavors of Haiti. Um, one of those destinations that we've all heard about, but there's still so much mystique to it. And, you know, if you've ever had Haitian food, you know, it is amazing. All Caribbean food is quite enticing, but there's something about Haitian food that just takes you to a place that, um, you know, creates or recreates some of the childhood memories. So I want to say thank you. We really did great on time today. Erica, I'll hand it back over to you if there are any questions. Are. But from us here at TAS, we just want to thank everyone for continuing to participate. And, you know, come back again tomorrow at five. We'll, we'll always have some treats in store. Thank you so much, Erica. Thank you, thank you so much, Jerry. Thank you. Jerry's a godmother of this TASC Food Festival event. So <laughs> and she was the one that was able to pull the you amazing people together. So we're very happy. Jerry, cheers. Thank you. And Erica, I did not thank you. You did such an amazing job. Well, you're very this, welcome. This was, made, this was made for you. It's like, have you been to Grenada? I've been to Grenada several times. And some of my oh, closest wow. friends are from Grenada. And Fantastic. I have to say I've had a, an affinity for Grenada for a long time. So um, wow. Eric Michael, my son, just said to me, Mom, we're not leaving cookies for Santa this year. We're leaving truffles. So Santa's <laughs> getting some truffles this year. Um, and they're so simple and delicious. I mean, oh, my goodness. You, you almost demystify the truffles. Hi, you, Eric Michael. Hi. Hi. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, you want to demystify the truffle. You want to demystify chocolate because... People think, oh, chocolate, you know, I need to get this temperature, that temperature, I have to melt it in a bain marie. And this is something very, very simple that anyone can do at home with, their, with the little ones too. Yeah, no, we're looking forward to that. And I think Santa will appreciate, I know he will be flying, but I think he will appreciate some of that number 37. In the, oh, yes. in the uh, number I, I do have uh, yeah, this, this I do have a question though for the mixologist, Rachel. Um, we had one of our viewers asking if they were going to create a mocktail for the holidays, what flavor combination would she recommend for a mocktail for the holidays this year? Oh, well, absolutely. For me so far, ginger has been the star. Okay. Um, so absolutely ginger could be something ginger beer. Um, is this, I think it is a fun way to enjoy the holiday flavors of sorrow as everyone know and some of the least favorites like for me i'm not a great big fan of it but some people do enjoy moabi that is, of course is another um holiday classic or favorite um and some sometimes you don't have to drink it i'm um and i'm ginger tea cocoa tea you don't have to drink it hot of course um we define those kind of things whether we want something hot or cold you are free to experiment and enjoy um of course some of the fruits would be apples and pears and these type of things but don't forget pumpkin pumpkin is something i don't think we um think of oh, much wow. times when it comes to drinks other than maybe a pumpkin spice latte but you can oh, absolutely wow. have wonderful pumpkin cocktails as well non-alcoholic alcoholic is a zero choice so rachel i don't want to put you on the spot but if you're going to make a very quick ginger syrup for a cocktail can you give us just a quick um recipe or maybe if you post it on your instagram so we can follow it but i know yes, you yes. A, a absolutely um i do have Instagram, but you can do the same thing with the ginger. So for me, what I would do, I would start off making a simple, um, a simple syrup, and I would then infuse it with that ginger, but I would grate it, 
in order to get the maximum from it mm -hmm. and still give it a little bit of oil. So whether you want it to use two cups to a half a cup, a cup of water, half a cup of water, you will have add your ginger, whether it be grated, sliced, however you choose to, and you let that just get a set steep there. I would recommend a hot infusion of about maybe four to five hours is really great to prep your ingredients at least a day before or uh, start a little earlier. All right, well, thank you so much. So Someone wants to hear uh, Rachel's um, Instagram handle again and also so, um, Lisette, they want to hear the name of your um, chocolate studio. So my at is at Rishi, R-A-C-H-I-E underscore mixologist. And that is M-I-X-I-L-O-G-I-O-S-T, I believe. <laughs> you can always correct me, but <laughs> you will absolutely see I have a two cocktails as my profile. I had did with flavors of Grenada and I continue to do and I hope that I will continue to grow my platform even more with your wonderful viewers as well. You're fantastic. We enjoyed having you for sure. Well, thank you so much. It was my pleasure. I enjoy having this moment with you. Great. Here's the holidays, ladies, and thank you. Here's to the holidays, and thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's lovely. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, Lisette, what is the name of your um your studio again? It's Gabu G A B U Gabu Chocolate. You can find it. Can I get a view of this? Actually, the see how it is. Oh gosh, hold on. Let me put the camera on. Okay. Thank Great. you. All right, everybody. Good night. Oh, there oh. we go. Okay, wait. wait. They're showing it to us. Instagram. There you well go. Well done. <laughs> Brilliant. Cheers, everybody, and a Merry Christmas to everyone. Mm -hmm. And the same mm -hmm. to you. Many happy returns. As we say, I mm -hmm. oh, come all you foodies. Yes. Let's so get to that. I've been watching them all and being so inspired by all the chefs throughout the Caribbean. So thank it's you. Fantastic. It's fantastic. It's such a great coming together. We definitely well, have a lot to be proud of and to be thankful for. So. Oh, absolutely. The Yep, we all make the Caribbean proud. Well, yeah. another great edition um, of Task Live. And um, we'll, we'll see everyone back here, same time, same place tomorrow for the um, Haitian chefs. Have a nice evening, everyone. All right, bye-bye, everybody. Cheers. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. Leave, yeah? yeah. Me.